Hello, everybody, and welcome to our 2021 International Screening Series. I'm Sharon Waxman, the CEO and the Editor-in-Chief of The Wrap. You all know me. We're here again to welcome so many wonderful films from around the world. Today, we have this year's Lebanon's international entry, Broken Keys. We are looking forward to a very busy extended award season this year. So please be on the lookout for new additions to our series. To be sure you're invited to all our future events, please check out our membership service, Rap Pro. We're kicking off today's event with a Broken Keys trailer, and then we'll go right into a conversation with the director, Jimmy K. Roos. He'll be coming to us from his home in Lebanon. We're not able to do an audience Q&A today, but we'd love you all to participate in the live chat. Let us know where everybody's tuning in from and what your favorite part of the film has been. And now before we introduce our guest, here's the trailer for Broken Keys. حاول تعبر عن شعورك من خلال الموسيقى. تخوف، تكبر، تغضب، الأمل. احتمال يوقف هالجنان شي نهار. شايفني مهمولة؟ لا. تفاؤل زين. ممكن يتعزف؟ مصورين وطاولة، يعني ما تحتاجوا. زعلت على قصة لبيان لا زعلت ولا شيء من بابا؟ طبعا ليك بديك معه لازم ترجع تنتحر انت خليك بمعاك وعوفني برا بيانو كان لك خلي جوزيف وين؟ فرنسا لسا هنا؟ يعني لساتنا عايشين هذا المهم هاي معنا حياة Mira, ¿qué? 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 هاي مهمة انتحارية عم تخاطر بحياتك مشان بيانو هذا الخيار الوحيد Welcome back. It's my pleasure to introduce director Jimmy K. Roos. So not only is Broken Keys Lebanon's international entry in the Academy Awards, but it made the Cannes Film Festival 2020 official selection. Director Jimmy K. Roos previously wrote and directed Nocturne in Black, which won the gold medal at the 43rd Student Academy Awards. Welcome, Jimmy. Hello, Sharon. Welcome. Thank you. And thanks for having me. Well, we're really delighted to have you coming all the way. Are you in Beirut? What part of Lebanon are you in? Yes, currently I am just outside of Beirut. I mean, you you could see, almost see Beirut from here. Uh, and uh, yes, I'm spending the holidays here in Lebanon. That's really fantastic. Well, it's the first time we're doing our international screening series virtually. So this is really going to be a tour around the world. Usually it's just a tour around the world by the cinema, but now the interviews are also going to be a tour around the world. Give us just a quick uh, sense. How is it going uh, in Beirut? How is it? How is it? What's the situation in Lebanon right now? Like from a COVID standpoint, from a um, just a life standpoint. Well, well, let me just say this. It's, it's been so, it's been so bad that to the point that COVID has become a secondary problem. Uh, <laughs> uh, and at some points, like for instance, we, after the, uh, the the explosion on the fourth of August, 
um, the third biggest explosion in, in a city after Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I mean, people just went out on the street and demonstrated, and, and people were helping out each other from the streets. And, 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 and COVID, something as huge as COVID became just, you know, yeah, I mean, there's that too, but let's deal with our bigger issues right now. So uh, we're it's really bad on all the levels. Port, right, in the port of Lebanon that yes, yes. Uh, ended up being, uh, I guess it was a government failure. I don't know exactly what. Exactly. It was a government failure. And for whatever reason, they stored uh, ammonium nitrate, uh, tons and thousands of tons of it in, in, in the harbor. And that was just one issue. I mean, one huge catastrophe on top of so many other issues, like a financial collapse, corruption, you name it. Mm -hmm. But your film, Broken Keys, is set in a different, uh, I'd say, disaster zone, <laughs> even worse, than yeah. which is um, the, the post, post-war sort of shambles that is Iraq and Syria. I'm not trying to be too harsh, but um, the film depicts this very uh, tragic, um, the ruins, in, in a sense, of these cities where people are living in the rubble and your main character who is absolutely wonderful, um, a wonderful actor who plays Kareem, his name is uh, Adel Karam. Uh, no, it, it's Tara Yaoub, the, the main character. Yeah. Sorry, okay. Adel, Adel Karam is another actor yeah, in the film. Oh, okay. Um, he's absolutely wonderful and he plays um, a, a musician who's trying to find his way uh, in this broken society. So let, let's talk a little bit about where the story came from. It, it, music is sort of a, a, a focal point for, uh, for the story line of, of war and strife and social collapse. Um, and it's a beautiful through line to have. Tell us how, how the story came together. Uh, it, it started in in 2014. I was I was still in New York at, at uh, and and trying to come up with an idea for my thesis film at Columbia University. Oh. And back then, the war in Syria was raging, uh, and and in Iraq and and I and the Islamic State was doing all sorts of like unthinkable, you know, the, the, the extraordinary things. Like you wouldn't believe that they were actually doing what they were doing inhuman completely like it's it's it's, it's worse than any fiction <laughs> and and but when i heard that music was banned i was really shocked i was i mean it was inconceivable for me that something as 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 beautiful and as innocent as music could be banned and you know i, I play piano too i mean as a hobby not a professionally but i've been playing piano since i was seven and and um and i was really shocked and and, and that kind of like it, it, it kind of spoke to me, and then I started researching about Iran, uh, Syria, Syria, and Iraq, and and then I discovered that a lot of musicians also were playing amidst the rubble, uh, trying to express themselves, trying to you know defy the, the stupid rules uh, that ISIS imposed. Um, and the inspiration came from that, from all the people who played various all, all kinds of instruments, but also not just the musicians, but the artists. Some people were performing, some people were risking their lives to preserve art. So it came from all that, you know. A movement to preserve not just art but uh, our humanity, the humanity, like their humanity, in a part of the world that is actually where you know so so, so much is is being lost. Mm -hmm. That's really beautiful. Yes, it is. Uh, this uh, seems an extremely cruel mystery. Why Al Qaeda or ISIS would bad music, which is so basic to human spirit, um, it seems. And your, your, talk about how you shot this thing. I mean, where did you shoot it? And it's also a little unclear to me, having seen the film, where does it take place? Does it take place in Syria or does it take place in Iraq? Actually, both. Uh, it's, okay. it's kind of like Karim is in one town and he goes to another town that could be in the other country and then he comes back to his hometown. Uh, but it also, it, it doesn't really, uh, I didn't really want to specify exactly which town was it or which city was it, because then I'll, I'll probably have to shoot there or make it look as if it was there exactly. And that's not the point. It happened in so many places in Iraq and Syria. What happened happened in so many places. So I didn't want to be that specific. 
Um, but where did we shoot? Uh, well, mostly in Lebanon because um, it's, it was much much easier. And I uh, saw so all the interiors were. I mean, ninety percent of the interiors are shot in Lebanon, and 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 we got away with some street scenes, but we shot for five days in in Mosul. In Iraq, and we shot in the in the last uh, place where ISIS fought, kind of. So Musa, Mosul was completely ravaged, and we were sleeping in Arabia, which is a town two hours away, a city two hours away from Mosul, and we were driving every day. Um, Isn't that safe? And mm, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I mean. We, we had a convoy, kind of like a military convoy with us. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, as soon as the sun was about to set, they were just like panicking. We have to go back, we have to start shooting, we have to stop shooting. And, I mean, nothing happened, but, uh, I mean, it's not the safest place. Uh, but you could still smell the, you know, the smell of some cadavers on, 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 on the, on the, from some buried underneath some rubble that you didn't see. Yes, I know, but despite what you, what I have to it sound, it actually was uh, a very memorable and unique experience for the cast and crew, because like, you know, they took it as a challenge, as an adventure, and kind of like, you know, uh, I think it had an impact that you can't forget in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a good way, not in a bad way. It will always be like a challenge and, and something that we did, and we're, we're happy we were able to pull it off. That, that sounds very dramatic, and kind of scary, but um, you're shooting in, uh, in, in the rubble or you actually created a set that... No, we shot in the rubble. We didn't have the budget for to recreate these kinds of sets. Uh, it would literally take... And, and, and Lebanon is not destroyed. I mean, yes, you find it no, no. here and there. Of yeah, course. so it, either you'd have to CGI everything, kind of like Game of Thrones and stuff like that, which we clearly have the budget. Or you'd have to build a gigantic studio, which we clearly don't have the budget for that. So the not just the the most the, I mean the less costly way, but also the most authentic way was to shoot on location. Also, we were very happy about that because nothing can be more authentic than reality. So um and the rest of it we, we shot in Lebanon, but again, also that wasn't easy because the Lebanese revolution has just started when we came back from, from Iraq. It, it started two days ago and we stopped shooting for a couple of weeks. Uh, and then we had to, it, we struggled to continue because every, everyone's schedule changed and then COVID happened. And, and it's, and, I mean, it's been challenges one after the, one after the other and then can didn't happen, but uh, I'm, I'm still very positive about, about some things <laughs> and grateful. <laughs> No, it feels very authentic. It's interesting also because we've had so many documentaries in the past number of years about what's happened in Syria, particularly less so Iraq, but really focused on Syria. That's been, that's been very prominent. So we're, as audiences, I think we're familiar with what that looks like. But it, the part uh, that that a dramatic film, that a feature can do, that a documentary can't do, is it really takes you inside the emotions and the inner lives of, of the characters. So let's talk about, about that a, a little bit. Uh, the, the lead actor is wonderful, uh, the man who plays the piano player. Tell us about him. Um, is, he, is he a well-known actor in the Arab world? Uh, he's, uh, he gives a beautiful performance as this uh, musician who's trying to find a meaning, hold on to some meaning in his life through this piano. Uh, thank you. I think he, he, he I, I do agree that with you totally, he did a wonderful job. At least I'm happy. Uh, I'm very happy with his performance. And and his name is Tara Yaoub. And, and we met about five years ago. I was casting for my short film, Not Turning Black. Uh, that was my thesis film at Columbia. It's the short film that the feature film, Broken Key, is based on. And I. It was it was almost about her side. I mean, I saw him and I was like, "Wow!" I mean, this is the guy. Uh, his eyes, his his his. I don't know. And and you know, the, the actor himself has gone through a lot in his life, uh, just like the character. And I told him about the role. I think we 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 connected straight away. And and for broken keys, he did want for a job, uh, learning piano, because uh, you know he didn't play. And <laughs> Yeah, he didn't play piano. I mean, first, but then, uh, wow. uh, but then he took lessons, intensive lessons for, for for three months, 
And I told him, and he was really worried about it. And I told him, listen, it doesn't matter. Just, you know, it's all about the pace and the placing of the hands. And a relief I had was like, you know, the, a relief moment I had was like at the, at the post-production when Gabriel Yarek, the, the, the composer, the Oscar-winning composer, with whom we were honored to, to work with, collaborate with, uh, and I asked him, like, do you notice anything wrong with, with the... <laughs> he said, no, no, it's perfect. I said, you know, he's not a pianist. He can't even play what he's playing. <laughs> and I think it's worked out, and I'm very happy to work out. And, but oh, wait, what he, was he playing? He, 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 put, he put in a lot of hard work. Uh, so, he was, well, it looks like he's playing in the, in the scenes where you're yeah, shooting. He, he is playing, but... Uh, I mean, he is playing, but with, for the close-ups, we used someone else's uh, someone Right, else's okay. But tell us, yeah. what is his uh, background? You said he has an interesting background. You said he has gone through some things himself. Yeah, I mean, things haven't always been easy for him on a personal level. I mean, he had to deal with the death, I think, in his family. And, and you know, as a, also, it's incredibly hard to be an actor in Lebanon. Uh, it's not, it's not, it's not Hollywood, it's not France, it's not, and, you know, like Kareem, like the character, a bit, he's kind of like stuck in this place where he really wants to achieve what he, he, he set out to, you know, to, 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 to achieve, he wants to reach his goals and dreams, but the place he's in is offering so little for him, and it's exactly just like Kareem, and that's why I really see the similarities between him and the character, it's like they, they both have these bigger dreams and they're they're both artists with bigger dreams and they can't like achieve their dreams and even their very realistic goals where they're at so they're kind of stuck and it's all about hope and and, and not giving up and 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 fighting for whatever hope there's there's left to you know keep going to wake up in the morning and, and yeah keep thinking that everything will work out yeah, that makes sense. Just more extreme for the character, but not not all that different. Um, well, well, how how has it been for getting this film out into the world? Uh, it, congratulations! It was chosen to go to the Cannes Film Festival, and then COVID happened, and the Cannes Film Festival was canceled. So, what has been the journey of the film? Um. I mean, apart from the cancellation, uh, uh, the can cancellation, and and right now the, the the official selection of Lebanon. I mean, we're we're just kind of like starting the. It hasn't been released yet. We're hoping it will be released uh, sometimes in spring because we're still hoping for a theatrical release and not and we're trying not to go straight to like the likes of the the, the VODs, the likes of, of Netflix, Amazon, Apple TV. Um, I mean, that's the goal. Uh, Mm -hmm. So, uh, so we've been, we we're really be, we, we've finished the film kind of like in, I'd say September, October. And since then we've been really focusing on, you know, um, submitting it to the Academy, the Golden Globes actually. And, and I hope that, uh, it will be released soon in the theaters and that will, it will screen in many, many festivals. I see. I didn't realize you were still finishing the film so recently. Yes. Uh, well, that that's got to be challenging. Um, how did you get uh, Gabriel Yared involved in this film? He's incredibly talented. The score is beautiful. And then I think I read that he had to uh, conduct the score remotely. <laughs> because yeah. of Talk to us about his his role a little bit. Uh, well, first, I'm, I'm, I'm incredibly grateful um, to have worked with him and collaborated with him because he's just such an inspiring person, not just as a musician. I mean, his, his records and, 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 and scores speak for themselves. But uh, I mean, it, I mean, it started, he, he watched my, my short film. Someone introduced us, he watched my short film. I think he, he liked it a lot and then he was, he was, he was on board. Uh, and for me, it was the, the first and biggest victory for the film before Cannes, before the uh, Lebanon's official selection. Um, and it was just, I, I barely needed to say anything. I mean, he, he just, you know, he, 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 I mean, we watched scenes together and we would discuss the scenes and he would tell me what he thinks the audience should feel at this moment and this, uh, at, at this particular point. And, and, 
it was I don't know it, it was it was incredibly easy. Hmm. You were working remotely though, yeah. We I was able to see him in, in Paris in February just before COVID started. Wow. Ah, okay. Um, uh, but then when he was about to 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 uh, record um, the score. He was in Paris and the orchestra was in London and he couldn't travel um, uh, because there were like restrictions and it was very risky to travel. Uh, so he kind of like yeah, conducted uh, the orchestra and, and, and oversaw the, the whole recording sessions with more with about 50, 60 musicians in London at Air Studios uh, with all the, 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 the sound engineers and everyone. and and. And everything was on Zoom, and I was, you know, I had, I was able to log in sometimes. I had, the, you know, a guest, uh, uh, and it's, it was incredible. Like even the score of this film happened in, in extraordinary circumstances, um, and so was the whole post production in a way. So between Lebanon and Paris, and but I'm, I'm very happy. I'm grateful for the result, and I'm very happy everyone was able to to pull it off. And I thank him and his team and everyone and everyone uh, so much for for you know overcoming every challenges that you know came yeah. our way. I just I want to mention for our viewers who may uh, be familiar with the name of Gabriel Yared, but not immediately remembering his work. He's the composer who did the score for the English Patient, uh, for Cold Mountain, for the talented Mr. Ripley. So many very uh, I would say legendary you know uh, cultural landmarks <laughs> uh, films. So for him to be working on your film, Jimmy, your first full-length feature is really fantastic, especially because the theme is about music and um, how how music, it, 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 at the end, you know, it feels like um, one can't help but think of the images of Adrian Brody in the Polanski film, uh, The Pianist, mm -hmm. um, of him playing in the rubble of World War II and thinking about that through line of, um, the the purity of music and the spirituality I think of what music brings um, and the folly of human uh, just just I'll I'll just say the folly of humanity and what lessons we learn and we have learned in the interim. But thank you so much for this film and thank you for being part of our screening series and talking about it. With our audience, it always is so uh, enlightening to get to talk to the filmmaker and understand their vision and um, what they brought to the screen and the challenges that you overcame, which in this case is quite a lot. So glad you made it out of Mosul okay. And <laughs> we hope you stay <laughs> safe in, in Lebanon as Lebanon goes through uh, its, its, on its uh, destiny right now. And let's all hope to be able to see each other uh, once this vaccine gets distributed and out there yes. through this COVID time. So thank you again for coming, Jimmy. And um, thank you so much for having me. Good luck at the Oscars. Thank you. Thank you to everyone for joining us today for our screening. It was great to have you. Be sure to take advantage of our free trial to Rap Pro, and you can be the first to know about our upcoming Rap screenings and events. You can also check back on all of our screenings at our screenings page, screenings.therap.com as well. Thanks so much for being